Hola amigos, que tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update video today. We'll have a look at some of the main newspapers here in Spain, check out what is happening around the country from a news point of view. We'll have a look at El Mundo, El País, El Confidencial, RTVE, the state broadcaster. And then at the end of the video, as usual, we will go into the comment section and check out what is happening there. So let's get straight into the news. We'll start off here with El Mundo and lots of news, as we can see, about the Madrid election. We've got a graph there from one of the recent polls and we can see that the PP is out in front. And as we know, most likely they will be able to govern with a little bit of help from either Vox or the Citizens Party. But we'll wait and see if things change over the next week or so in the run up to that election. And there's an article here about what the summer is going to look like this year in Spain, so we'll click on that one. And the headline reads, Así será el segundo verano pandémico, una recuperación por goteo que empezará en el norte y con menos británicos y más franceses. So this will be the second pandemic summer, a trickle recovery that will begin in the north and with fewer British tourists and more French tourists. Domestic demand will recover before foreign demand, which will be gradual and from July. So the summer tourist season this year in Spain will most likely get off to a slow start. In dribs and drabs, as the article said there, less British tourists and more French. And starting in the north of the country and working its way down, obviously because of that proximity to France and no recovery expected before the month of July. So it's going to be interesting to see what the summer tourism season looks like this year. Is it going to be similar to last year where the north of Spain was very, very busy? Places like Cantabria, Asturias, Galicia, very, very busy last year because of that internal demand. And we'll see what type of foreign tourism we get this year. Is Spain going to be a popular tourist destination? Are people going to be looking to have a holiday in Spain? Those are the questions we will see answered as we get closer to summer. Now we'll go back into the news and there's another tourism related article. So we'll click on that one as well, this time about British tourism in Spain. And the headline reads that the United Kingdom is accelerating COVID passports so people can return to a desperate Spain. It is a measure that is to be approved next month, but it will still have to overcome some pending obstacles. So there we go, another article about those COVID passports. The British government apparently trying to speed things up so that people can travel to, as the headline said, a country that is desperate for tourists. The article also mentions that both Spain and Greece are trying to work on safe travel corridors again with the United Kingdom. So the country trying to do everything in its power to reactivate the tourism sector. But as we know, it's also going to depend on Boris Johnson and whether or not he allows people to leave the country for holiday purposes, which at the moment I think is not possible. Now we'll leave El Mundo there, go into El País, check out what is happening there. And the main headline El País is going with here on the left, also about the Madrid elections. And the headline reads, Pablo Iglesias abandona el segundo debate de candidatos tras poner en duda Vox la denuncia sobre la carta con balas. So Iglesias abandons the second candidate debate after Vox doubts the complaints that they have made about receiving a letter with bullets in it. And there's an article just below that that says Iglesias and Marlaska received death threats. So things definitely heating up here in Spain at the moment with two prominent politicians, Mr. Iglesias and the Interior Minister or the Home Minister, Mr. Marlaska, receiving death threats in the form of a letter filled with bullets. And I'm going to pose the question, what type of clown thinks it's a good idea to threaten politicians in the middle of an election campaign? As we also saw in the headline, the right-wing party Vox doesn't believe Mr. Iglesias' story, thus causing him to get up and abandon the debate. And as I mentioned the other day, there is a real ideological war going on at the moment here in Spain between those two extremes, the extreme right, Vox, and the extreme left, Podemos, and apparently now death threats, so what's next? Now we'll go back into the news and we'll have a look at this story here about the health crisis. And we can see the headline, the fourth wave of COVID subsides due to vaccines and restrictions, but pressure on hospitals persists. And the health department assumes that Spain is entering a stabilization period, but seven autonomous communities in two autonomous cities are at extreme risk. So that slow rollout of COVID-19 vaccines here in Spain, having a positive effect on the health situation and reducing the impact of the fourth wave. Imagine what the situation will would be like if people took the vaccination rollout seriously from the beginning. Now we'll leave El País there, go to El Confidencial, check out what's happening there. We'll have a look at the vaccination data and we can see that 7.94% of the population have received both doses 
of COVID-19 vaccines. We'll see if there's been any progress in some of the autonomous communities, starting with Andalusia, and we can see that they have completed vaccination on 7.89% of the population. The Canary Islands, 6.1%. The Balearics, 5.89%. Valencia, 7.05% and Madrid 6.86. Now the main headline that El Confidencial is going with here is also about the death threats made to Mr. Iglesias, and apparently other left-wing parties also abandoned that debate in support of Mr. Iglesias. And there's a headline here about face mask wearing in the European Union in Spain, and the headline reads that Europe has given the okay that grandparents and grandchildren should be able to get together without having to wear a mask. But Spain has said that this won't be possible just yet. And that was a piece of news that made the headlines yesterday, the European Union giving the okay for people that have been vaccinated to meet with other family members and not have to wear a mask. But Spain, as we saw, saying that it's not a good idea to implement something like this just yet. So when are we going to be able to go mask-free here in Spain? That's the question. Now we'll leave El Confidencial there. Go to RTVE, the state broadcaster. Check out what's happening there. And both of the main headlines there on the left about those death threats. And there's an article here about AstraZeneca. So we'll click on that one. And the headline reads that the European Union is preparing a lawsuit against AstraZeneca to fulfill its commitments in the delivery of doses. The spokesman for the European Commission assures that all options are considered, including the legal ones. So again, the problems between the European Union and the company AstraZeneca making headlines here in Spain, with the European Union threatening to sue the company because they didn't deliver the amount of doses that were in the contract. And the AstraZeneca saga goes on and on and on. Now we'll leave the news there and go into the comment section. Check out what is happening there today. One here from Nikki. Hi Stuart, I have been following your channel for almost a year now. I moved from Florida to Spain to teach English, so thanks so much for all of your information. You've been such a big help. I live in Madrid and luckily I was able to get the first vaccine of the AstraZeneca about a month ago. Do you know if I'll be able to get the second dose administered? Or will it be a second dose from the Pfizer vaccine? Yeah, Nikki, thanks for the comment and good question. To be honest, I don't know the exact answer. I know that the health department at the moment is still trying to work out whether they can give a different second dose to people that received the AstraZeneca vaccine. There's lots of people in the same boat as you, essential workers, policemen, firemen, the army, teachers, people working in the health system, and they're all asking the same question. What is going to happen with my second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine? As I said, not 100% sure at the moment, but I'm sure that there is going to be an announcement soon soon from the health ministry. One here from Frank. Thanks for the update, Stuart. I'm heading down the mountain tomorrow to Marbella to go to Specsavers for an appointment. It'll be interesting to see what it's like down there as I haven't been down to Marbella since the start of the pandemic. I hope my favorite cake bread cafe shop in Marbella has survived the pandemic. Take care, Frank and Andalusia, Serranía de Ronda. Yeah, Frank, thanks for the comment and what a wonderful part of Spain that must be living in the mountains there near Ronda. I've only been to that part of the world once or twice over the years and I absolutely loved it and would love to be able to get back down there soon. And I'm not really sure what the business situation is like in Marbella at the moment, if many businesses or not have had to close. I'm sure that we have lots of viewers in that part of Spain who could give us an update on what the situation is like down there. All I know is that here in my local area, a couple of businesses closed down, but those businesses have since since been taken over by other businesses and are open again. So the economy here, at least in the Madrid community, seems to be going okay. But I know down there in Andalusia, there have been a lot of restrictions over the last few months. People not being able to leave municipalities, people not being able to travel to other provinces, and restrictions on opening and closing times in bars and restaurants and coffee shops like you mentioned there in the comment. But good luck with your trip, and I hope you're able to get a nice cup of coffee and a nice piece of cake. Let us know. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.